Chief Randall Taylor from IMPD. It sounds like they're gearing up for a quick press briefing here. Let's listen in. However, there was a small group of people that escalated to violent acts, including throwing projectiles at officers and breaking windows of government buildings. Since then, we have seen a continued and escalating uh, incidents of violence. This includes shootings, or shots fired, and loss of life. This is not acceptable in this community. This behavior will not be tolerated by the IMPD. We're asking that residents who do not live in the downtown area to go home. Enough is enough. Indianapolis, we are better than this. Downtown is not safe at this time. Residents who do not live in the downtown area, we're asking to please vacate the area. For questions, reference our operational stance and what we're doing, I will turn the mic over to Deputy Chief Josh Parker. Uh, good evening. I'll take any questions you guys have specifically to the events tonight. Okay. Well, first for the chief, you referred to a fatality. What can you tell us about it? Uh, there was a person that was shot earlier this evening. Uh, we're still investigating. I don't have much in the way of details of that. Is that Talbert in Vermont? I believe so. Okay. How many people were shot tonight? Uh, there was more than one. I believe we're three. three. How many reports of shots fired so far? How many reports of shots fired? Multiple. We've, Multiple lost, we've lost count at this okay. point. Okay, Josh, maybe you got a handle on this. How many arrests tonight and or how many weapons have you taken off the streets? Uh, we don't have, uh, we're still compiling information on the number of uh, official enforcement action we've taken. Uh, I can tell you it has been a number uh, and that's been driven by violent and riotous behavior by some of the individuals that have come to the downtown area this evening. IMPD seemed to take a more aggressive stance than 24 hours ago when things kind of spun, because I was there when the first tear gas was being thrown. Has that worked? Uh, I think it's important before we get to that point to make a clear delineation that in the very beginning uh, today, we saw what we consider one of the most successful protests that Indianapolis has experienced. Um, you had between three to 600 people who came down to peacefully gather uh, and in an open forum discuss the issues that were on their mind that had them aggravated. Uh, those are issues that the nation is facing and everybody is sharing in a lot of those issues right now. We took an opportunity uh, and we're very happy to do so to meet with the protest organizers. Uh, and the reason that works so well is because we policed with one another. Uh, we made everybody's uh, intentions clear. Uh, the organizers um, provided us what their plan was, and I want everybody to be very clear that until things uh, escalated at the city county building this evening, law enforcement had a hands-off approach. Uh, we were nowhere near the peaceful protest that occurred. Several hundred people were allowed to gather uh, and talk through those issues in a public forum. We even provided them traffic control to allow them to move freely about the downtown area. Uh, and that protest went off without an issue. Um, unfortunately, as the chief alluded to, there were several people down here that had no intention to protest. Their intention was to riot. And when they culminated in front of the city county building on Market Street, they made those intentions very well known. Do you think that this is being driven by people from outside of Marion County or outside of the state of Indiana? We're working on the we're working on those um, pieces of information to confirm that. Uh, at this point, it would be speculation at best. Um, however, throughout the day, as we were observing the peaceful protest, uh, it, it's important for everybody to understand because we under we recognize the fact that we're out we're outside of the normal operation with you not having access to what we're hearing on the radio all evening. Consistently throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours, as we were observing the peaceful protesters, at the same time we were observing individuals in the crowd that were loading rocks into backpacks. Uh, they were preparing bottles of milk to counteract uh, chemical agents used to disperse crowds. Um, numerous weapons. We had, uh, we had groups of white individuals armed with rifles. Uh, African-American individuals armed with rifles. We had people in parking garages armed with rifles. Tensions were very high, but because of the 
proactive relationship and rapport we established at the beginning of the protest, we're able to allow those things to continue to go on with very little concern that there was going to be unrest. As things transpired in front of the city county building later in the afternoon, again, we observed what we know to be active measures taken against law enforcement to turn a peaceful protest into a violent riot. And that is what we saw occur in front of the city county, county building. Rioters using amber lights and emergency equipment and private vehicles to block market on one end. You had other rioters join arms and, and uh, make a human chain at the other end. And we saw people donning eye protection, masks, as they moved up and went from a peaceful protest to actively crowding the building, starting to bang on the windows, throwing frozen water bottles, and it culminated in an individual who we caught on camera and will seek to prosecute, actively kicking out a window of our city county building. This community's city county building, the center of this community's government, they kicked the window out, building deputies inside had to request IMPD's assistance. It's important for you to understand that up to that point, there was no proactive law enforcement engagement with the peaceful protesters. It was at the point that we had to ask for help from our other public safety partners that IMPD made first contact with the rioters and that group of protesters in an active effort to get them away from our building so that they wouldn't gain entry. Uh, and as, a, as we did that, we immediately started taking rocks, rioters started throwing fire, uh, fireworks and incendiary uh, materials at our officers, they started vandalizing vehicles. They forced us to use chemical agents to disperse violent rioters from an otherwise peaceful protest. And they continued to increase their level of, of violence and agitation, as we've all seen, throughout the course of the evening. And we're not done yet. It's now culminated in three people shot, one person dead. Officers consistently asking for help from occupied businesses and from people that live in this city and expect the level of safety provided by their police department and their rights feel violated because of a violent few who have come down here to perpetrate a riot in our city. And we can't tolerate that and IMPD absolutely condemns it. We will work with anybody that wants to come down and peacefully assemble, and we will proactively engage in those discussions to police that with you. But we will not tolerate those that want to come down here and perpetrate what you're seeing tonight. Tires burning in the street, dumpsters being rolled into the middle of the street and caught on fire, officers taking shots, bottles, rocks, damaging police vehicles. It's unacceptable, and it has to stop. Chief, what can you tell us about the mayor's involvement tonight, conversations with him? Is he here at uh, the command center with you? Uh, the mayor is not here with me, but uh, we've had numerous conversations throughout the night. Let me make one thing very clear. Uh, I certainly appreciate Deputy Chief Barker and, and the rest of my staff, Assistant Chief Bailey, and, and all of them that are here behind me. They've done a fantastic job. But no one's done more fantastic job than the men and women of IMPD that are working the streets, who have come down here and are still working the districts. And let's get something else straight. If you're still down here tonight, then more than likely you're into something you probably shouldn't be, and we want you to go home uh, or be prepared for, for what comes. We cannot uh, stand for this. Too much destruction uh, is going on right now. Uh, this city deserves much better, so we'll be taking care of that. Thank you. Have there been any reports of officers being injured? We've had no. one officer with minor injuries. He was checked out at the scene. We don't believe it's anything serious. Have question. you identified any groups? Any, any groups by name? Uh, I don't have that information. Earlier today, this will be the last question. Earlier today, Governor Holcomb said that he was going to make uh, the Indiana State Police available to local agencies who needed it. Earlier, we saw a state police vehicle heading down the Anaheim Highway to feed. Have you guys requested help? And what's the uh, uh, Superintendent Carter has, has been an asset to us and has made his men and women available to us. And yes, we have taken them up on that offer. Uh, they've helped us out. They helped us out a little bit last night. They've helped us out uh, tonight, moving into this morning. So we appreciate their uh, their help as well. Has the violence been reported in any other parts of the town tonight? Not, not that I'm aware of. Thank you. Thank you.